we pause our daily lives to honor those who have dedicated their lives to serving our great nation. At this time, please stand. Military in uniform should stand at attention, and civilians should place their right hand over their heart for the presentation of colors by the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Honor Guard and the playing of the national anthem by the Air Force Band of Flight, Spirit of Freedom. Today's ceremony is hosted by the Air Force Museum Foundation, the philanthropic organization that funds facility expansions and program support for the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. Representing the foundation are Colonel Retired Susan Richardson, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Air Force Museum Foundation, Colonel Retired James B. Shepley, Emeritus Member of the Board of Trustees, Air Force Museum Foundation, and Mr. Mike Imhoff, Executive Director, Air Force Museum Foundation. Today's guest speakers are Colonel Retired Susan Richardson, Mr. David Tillotson, Ms. Fran Dunce, Program Director, Acquisition Domain Capabilities Integration, Stellar Innovations and Solutions. We appreciate the support of Ed Smith Flowers and Gifts and an, and an anonymous donor for the donation of flowers used in today's ceremony. Following the ceremony, guests will be encouraged to place flowers at the data plate wall. And finally, on the occasion of this Memorial Day weekend, we extend a very special thank you to the veterans who have joined us this morning. I invite Lieutenant Colonel Edwin St. Rose, base chaplain, to come forward to deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we give you thanks this day for the gift of reflection and rehearsal, and for all those who have served this great nation, and for those who are no longer with us, but through their sacrificial service have given us the opportunity to look back on their memory with gratitude and appreciation. From the very beginning of our nation's history, there have been those who have willingly given so much to this nation, knowing that in many instances it called for the ultimate sacrifice. They were courageous and were never afraid to do so, be because they understood that we all should serve because of causes that are greater than ourselves and for their impressive service to the nation 
and for the example of service they left us, we give you thanks. May we always, like them, be so challenged. Today, we take a few moments at this annual memorial event to pay tribute and to memorialize their legacy. May we never lose sight of the deeper meaning of what it stands for. As we think of their service today, may we continue to honor their legacy by our own service and through the decisions we make on behalf of the nation they loved and served. Inspire us even now to go and do likewise. Rekindle in us during this ceremony the desire to make our nation safer and better. Continue to bless us, we humbly pray, and may today be especially etched in our memory to the truth of what patriotism truly means. For we ask all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Our first speaker today retired from the U.S. Air Force in 2005. She served 26 years as an aerospace physiologist. She is the chairman of the Board of Trustees for the Air Force Museum Foundation and the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force Volunteer. Please welcome Colonel Susan Richardson. Good morning. It's nice to see so many people who are here today. Uh, welcome on behalf of the Air Force Museum Foundation that this is a very special tribute to dedicate the new data plates. But it's appropriate at this point to uh, tell some of the history of why we have data plates. Because you know, a lot of museums have bricks, but the Air Force Museum has data plates. This is a wonderful piece of history dating back to World War I when airplanes were made out of wood and cloth. And when they crashed, they would burn beyond recognition. And so the Army Air Service decided to add a special data plate that signified that particular airplane as unique. And on this wall, we have the unique stories of individuals that made an impact on people's lives maybe an impact on many people's lives. These are family members, these are veterans, these are volunteers, these are instructors. But on the website, and if you haven't gone to the foundation website and read some of these stories, I encourage you to do so because there are some remarkable people on this wall. But for those of you who have added stories, uh, for those people that are special to you, we want to say thank you. Thank you for adding them to this special wall, and thank you for being here today. Thank you, Colonel Richardson. Our next speaker is a member of the Senior Executive Service and currently the director of the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Prior to becoming the director of the museum, Mr. Tillotson was the Assistant Deputy Chief Management Officer at the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Please welcome Mr. David Tillotson. Uh, thank you, and thank you all for being here today. I had a phone call this morning from my wife, who is still, um, I'm still a little bit geographically separated, so she's in Virginia. But like all good long-term partners, she serves as my conscience, and for those who know me, um, since my own conscience is atrophied through lack of use, it's also important for me to have an external conscience who calls and reminds me of things. And today's reminder phone call was, this is Memorial Day weekend. And not to lose track of the fact that it isn't about the first day of summer, it isn't about starting vacations, it is in fact about honoring people who have served the nation. So I had actually asked the museum staff what we did here on Memorial Day and the answer was, well, we don't do anything. And I thought, well, that's an intriguing answer. But then I remembered this event. So I want to thank my partners in the Air Force Museum Foundation for not losing track of the fact that this is Memorial Day weekend and that this is the time they choose to honor the legacy data plate activities. So I think that's very important this year, especially with note um, that we're going to honor all 16 crews of the Doolittle Raid. Um, a very bittersweet moment for all of us this year because Lieutenant Colonel Richard Cole just passed away a couple of months ago. So we will be honoring all of the crews and their service. And I think that's very appropriate for Memorial Day. So thank you for that. 
My colleagues at the uh, National Aviation Hall of Fame, uh, uh, Amy Spowart, who's the executive director, is frequently fond of pointing out to me that it is the role of the National Aviation Hall of Fame to remember the software in aviation, meaning the people, and that we, meaning the uh, National Museum of the Air Force, frequently focus on the hardware, the airplanes, and certainly that's what dominates the floor when you walk into our museum. But if you take the time to look around, there are actually the detailed stories, in many cases, of the people who served, because it isn't, in fact, about the airplane. You know, it's kind of like it's not about the bike. It's about the people who served in the airplanes. It's the people who pursued the missions. Um, it's the people who actually executed that. And I think having the legacy data plates attached or affixed to the National Museum is a key and essential part of our mission, because after all, our unofficial motto is, we are the keepers of their stories. So on this particular day, I want to thank everybody for being here as we remember their stories. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tillotson. Today's keynote speaker retired from the Air Force's Senior Executive Service in 2008 after 31 years of distinguished service in the acquisition and life cycle management communities. She is currently Project Director, Acquisition Domain Capabilities Integration for Stellar Innovations and Solutions Incorporated. She serves as a board member for the Air Force Museum Foundation, National Aviation Hall of Fame, and the Greater Ohio Valley Chapter of Women in Defense. Please welcome Ms. Fran Dunst. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. OK. I'm so happy to be here at the Air Force Museum with you this morning. The museum is a very special place to me and my whole family. And this wall of honor and data plate memorial provide memories that I'll always cherish. When the Museum Foundation developed the concept of the Data Plate Memorial seven years ago, I thought it would be a wonderful way to commemorate my dad's service to the U.S. Navy, sorry, Air Force, <laughs> U.S. Navy, and to America. But the more I thought about it, I realized that I needed to commemorate the service of my grandfather, my two uncles, and their father as well. These five men from the Allen family and the Dixon family dedicated their lives to service in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines. I couldn't be more proud than I am today of what they've accomplished during their military service for our country and in the long run for four generations of our family after that. They set the standard for generations to come and as standard bearers will always be a part of this museum's wall of honor. This wall of honor represents two things to me. First, it represents all the hard work and sacrifice of everyone being honored on the wall today. And secondly, it represents the wonderful opportunity provided by the museum and the museum foundation to commemorate members of everyone's family. All of this brings out the real meaning to this Memorial Day celebration. It's a time to remember those who have gone before us and cherish our memories of them and a time to think about the future for our children and our children's children. The museum and the museum foundation in partnership are always looking forward to determine how capturing history can most impact the lives and futures of our children through the application of new technologies and education. Please enjoy your Memorial Day weekend, and please take some time to read, to cherish, and to remember. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duns. Now a museum volunteer, Major Retired Lloyd Bryant, will read the names of those who have been added to the Wall of Honor in the past year. Please hold your applause until all names have been read. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everybody here today. We have, for the first time, this opportunity to read the actual names of the people whose plates have gone up during this cycle. This is going to take a few minutes. Uh, you will, uh, those of you here should be recognizing at least some of the names. As I've looked through the list, there are names on there who are very well-known people, astronauts, former chief of staff, some folks like that. But I want to take the time now to read. Let us start with a very special group of people, and that is the Doolittle Raiders. Crew number one, James H. Doolittle, Richard E. Cole, Henry A. Potter, Fred A. Bramer, Paul J. Leonard. Crew number two, Travis Hoover, William N. Fitzhugh, Carl R. Wildner, Richard E. Miller, Douglas V. Radney. Crew number three, Robert M. Gray, Jacob E. Manch, Charles J. Ozick, Jr., Aiden E. Jones, Leland D. Factor. Crew number four. Everett W. Holstrom, Lucian N. L Youngblood, Harry C. McCool, Robert J. Stevens, Bert M. Jordan. Crew number five. David M. Jones, Ross R. Wilder, Eugene F. McGurl, Denver V. Truelove, Joseph W. Mansk. Crew number six. Dean E. Hallmark, Robert J. Meter, Chase J. Nielsen, William J. Dieter, and Donald E. Fitzmaurice. Crew number seven, Ted W. Lawson, Dean Davenport, Charles L. McClure, Robert S. Clever, David J. Thatcher. Crew number eight, Edward J. York, Robert G. Emmons, Nolan A. Herndon, Theodore H. Laban, David W. Pohl. Crew number nine, Harold F. Watson, James N. Parker, Jr., Thomas C. Griffin, Wayne M. Bissell, Eldred V. Scott. Crew number 10, Richard O. Joyce, J. Royden Stork, Horace E. Crouch, George E. Larkin, Jr., Edwin W. Horton, Jr. Crew number 11, C. Ross Greening, Kenneth E. Reddy, Frank A. Kepler, William L. Birch, Melvin J. Gardner. Crew number 12, William M. Bauer, Thad H. Blanton, William R. Pound, Jr., Waldo J. Bither, Omer A. Duquette. Crew number 13, Edgar E. McElroy, Richard A. Knobloch, Clayton J. Campbell, Robert C. Bourgeois, Adam R. Williams. Crew number 14, John A. Wilger, Jack A. Sims, James H. Macia, uh, Job Ironman, Edwin V. Bain, and crew number 15, Donald G. Smith, Griffith P. Williams, Howard A. Sessler, Edward J. Sal uh, Saylor, uh, Thomas R. White. And crew number 16, William G. Farrow, Robert L. Height, George Barr, Jacob DeShazer, and Harold Spatz. The names of the do little raiders who are being added to the wall this year. Our next group, some organizations have been, are going up on the wall. They are the 14th Intelligence Squadron, the 21st Intelligence Squadron, the 864th Engineer Aviation Battalion, the 6924th Security Squadron, the 417th Tactical Fighter Squadron, and U.S. Air Force Pilot Training Class 52E, and the B-2 Team. Our next list, the individuals. Now again, this is a long list, and you'll be recognizing some of the folks on the list. 
uh, but we are honoring every single individual. I wanted to take a moment, if I might, my wife and my great-granddaughter are here. You may have heard her a few minutes ago. She's just turned one year old, and we wanted to have her come in and see me do one of these. So, so I, although I think they've left, there they are, all right, all right sweetie. Um, but anyway, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's not. Uh, she, they're outside the room. All right, here are the individuals whose names you will be seeing on the wall. And they are in alphabetical order. Carolyn Eau Claire. Howard Bain, Sr. Howard Bain, Jr. Jeffrey Bain. Gary Bain. Brian Bain. Oliver T. Baird. Dean Bartling. Lyman E. Bashor. Alfred Bass. Charles Berg. Charles Bolden. Eric Bauer, Jr. Wesley Brown. Katie Brugler. Raymond Bryan. W. Bushmeyer, L. Campbell, Malcolm S. Carpenter, Tom Casey, Robert L. Cody, Raul, Raul Cordejo, Robert Cortez, Robert Kotzemeyer, Kevin W. Culp, Walter Cunningham, Brenda Cherwick, John R. Daly, William H. Dana, Joseph Davis, Jr., Ann S. Davis, Scott Ann Davis Kossoff, Chris Davis, Joe, uh, Jan Ann Davis Vater, H. Detheridge, Jr., John J. DeBoer, Jr., Leland DeLong, Dave Dennison, Frank Dobin, and Nicholas Dobin, Robert Drosendahl, George P. Edwards, Lance R. Fairchild, Donald Feltz, Bruce Farrell, David Ellison Ferris, Ronald Fogelman, Laura C. Fordham, Cornelia Fort, Phil French, Alexander Furla, Bob Gelke, Paul Gelke, and Roy Gelke, Robert J. Gilliland, Robert Gleason, C.V. Glines, Harrison Golem, the Good Pastor family, Stephen R. Grace, Paul Green, Tim Green, Ola C. Griffith, Guy Gruters, Vincent Hag, Francis Hag, Eugene Hag, Irel Haynes, Barry Hamill, Renee Hamill, Monty Hand, Theodore Harrison, Eugene D. Harvey, Jr. Deborah Hastings, Samuel Herco, Donald Hickman, Robert Hires, Don Hogland, Daniel Holcomb, John Holoviak, Jr., Donald Hauk, Herbert L. Horseman, Hazel I. Horseman, Charles Horton, Lydia Hauser, Jack Hudson, Jerry Irwin, Marsha Irwin, Richard Isaacs, Mike Jackson, Gordon Gerald, James Kennedy Jr., Joy Ann Kennedy, Kurt Kirsten, John Clett Jr., C. Bud Nefflin, Stanley M. Kossoff, Charles Krauss. I, no, I have a correction. Charles Krauss is how I was told. T. Bear Larson, E. Kemp Laswell, Fritz Lohman, Stephen Leonard Esquire, Alec H. Lester, Ruth M. Lester, Tom Liu, Stephen G. Long, Russell E. Lott, Michael Lundy, James Maley, Steve Malone, Ronald Maple, Dave Matthews, James Maziars, John McCants, John McKenna, Madeline McKenna, Gregory W. Meyer, Alan Milicek, Hank Miller, William Malesko, R. M. Mokel, Albert Nash, Nathan Nickel, Don Dieto, Harold Nunnemaker, Gerald Oliver, William Pantel, Lanny Patton, Ken W. Patton, 
Kenneth N. Pennington, Ted Eugene Perry, Jim Pfaff, Art Powell, Stephen T. Powers, Joseph Pryor, Donald Rash, Dorothy Rash, Alice S. Ray, William Ray, John M. Ketterer, Retterer, I'm sorry, John M. Retterer, D.K. Retterer, Casey Retterer, Wilfred Roberts, Milton Sable, James C. Sammons, William Schaff, Donald Shepley, Elwood Snell, John Shell, Rosalind Shell, Walter Seeley, Bruce Seeley, Catherine Seeley, Ernest Seeley, Kent Seeley, Jay Shannon, June Shannon, Ron Seewick, Elmer Stolte, Nevin Stolte, and Evelyn Stolte, John Stewie, Dennis Sapanich, J.L. Swearingen, Louis Tamburino, Matthew Thorpe, Bruce Trimble, Lawrence E. Tudor, Jr., William Vaughn, Vernon Arthur Vick, James Villines, Leroy Webb, Rebecca Westlake, Claiborne White, Sir Frank Whittle, Anthony Wonar, Franklin Wolf, and William Zito. Those are the names that are dug up on the wall. In honor of those who have served our nation and their families, TAPS will now be played by Master Sergeant Michael Richter of the Air Force Band of Flight. During the sounding of TAPS, it is customary for military members in uniform to stand at attention and for civilians to place their right hand over their heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. <laughs> It's a tremendous honor uh, for everyone that's ever served, but particularly for us because uh, your grandfather and my dad got to do a lot with the services. Uh, we're just so very proud. Um, and I, I think his ethic has been passed along through the family. I, th I think it's being proud, being an American. Um, always do the best that you can do. You know, um, just be the very best you can be. It's uh, very emotional. Um, you know, this was, this was such a nice honor. It was very emotional because, again, we wish he could be here, and I know that he is, um, but this would have been his day. This would have made his, his career. I, it's, it's really just amazing all the things he's, um, he had gone through. And I, I wish I was um, the age I am today to hear some of those stories. I think I can appreciate it a lot more today. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just amazing that that uh, history is now going to be a part of the museum 
and so I'll get to you know eventually take my kids here and show them the plaque.